morning, everybody, especially you right there. We're in Vinton, Virginia. Just delivered my first of four drops. My last drop is gonna be all the way up in Maine, so we're going right up the east, eastern seaboard here in the US. There's only two skids. Two skids coming this all the way to Virginia for two skids. Now I've got another, how many is going on this next one? One skid. I got one skid that's going to Woburn, Massachusetts. I gotta go there today, deliver tomorrow. It's gonna be a full day drive getting there. It's uh, about 1,100 kilometers, 620, 650 miles, something like that. It'll be a full day, uh, deliver that. And then after that, I've got another two or three skids that are going to, like they're big skids, they're big. They're not just like, right, the, these next ones are big. Uh, or pardon me, no, no. Sorry, I got four big skids that are gonna be ending off in Biddeford, Maine the next day. But first we have to go to Beverly, so it's a little confusing. Okay, so let's just do one at a time. We got Vinton, Virginia done. Now we're going to Woburn, Massachusetts. Let's just worry about one thing at a time. Let's worry about today. Tomorrow can worry about itself. Let's get out there. Stop by the Blue Beacon, get a truck wash. There's a Petra up ahead. There's a petrol stopping center up ahead about an hour down the road. It's got a streaking beacon. I think that's where I'm gonna stop. If I'm gonna roll through the eastern seaboard here or up the east coast, I wanna do it, I wanna do it in a clean truck. West Virginia yesterday and it was at night. I was kind of disappointed but I could just imagine the scenery must have been beautiful. I always love driving through West Virginia. It's amazing how they build these cities like right on like right into the hills.
this is a pilot, but I'm saying it's a 1-9. It's a 1-9 truck stop. talking about these 1-9 truck stops being part of the Pilot Flying J network. And again, my GPS here says that this is a Pilot. That's why I pulled in here. I wanted to get a coffee. I saw this on the map, and I thought of maybe parking here last night because it's right close by where I delivered. But as you can see in front of me here, you don't want to park here. <laughs> That's the whole lot. I mean, I guess if you don't mind, you could either come in the exit and risk blocking everybody in if someone's trying to get out. Uh, and then back in like this guy did, that's probably what I would want to do. Or you can come in the entrance, come around the back where I came in, and then nose into a spot and then have to back out. I mean, that might that might work too. I mean, obviously it's working for all these guys. We're on the East Coast. That means parking is limited. And the truck stops that are available are usually very small, in my opinion. But yeah, one nine, like O-N-E, like the, the, the letters Spelt out one and then the number nine. Is that Flying J now? Did they buy it out or what happened? Uh, so yeah, this is my pilot card worked here for the coffee. Uh, it says one nine on it, but everything in there is still pilot. Look at this, the coffee even says pilot on it. So what happened people? Somebody learn me. What happened? Did Pilot Flying J buy 1.9 or did 1.9 buy five Pilot Flying J? Who bought who? What happened? What's going on here? If they're changing from Pilot to 1.9, you'd think that they bought Pilot. But Pilot Flying J is huge. That would be a massive purchase. I thought I would have heard about that in the news or something. That's huge. Man, no extra space in here. Just right over there uh, in front of us. Just gotta get over there. A lot of people, a lot of people everywhere. Stopping center, there's a blue beacon here. I want a truck wash. Turn right. right and then approaching destination on the left side in 60 meters. Oh, I see it. I see it. How do I get over to Blue Beacon? Oh, I see it. it's over there. Okay, so I want to go this way. This is a huge truck stop. Like, wait till we see the other side. The arrows point. I can't go that way. I go through the pumps. I think I should go around where that guy's going. I don't need fuel from here. I want a truck wash. Where, how do I get to the truck wash? I guess I should have gone around this way before already. Look both ways for NASCAR drivers.
Mini Iowa 80. This is exit 205 on Interstate 81, Virginia. Easy. All this parking back here. Oh, this is the entrance? I think this is the entrance. This is a little bit confusing the way they set this all up. Yeah, this is the entrance. Okay. Truck wash, enter here. check their work I washed the trailer too it's not my trailer but I paid to wash it because I want to drive to drive the rest of this week with a clean one behind me so we'll see how well they done I don't always wash their equipment but sometimes sometimes when I'm feeling generous why not okay here we go you guys ready Not bad, not bad, it looks a lot better. The wheels and tanks and steps definitely needs to still be repolished. Right now that's on the agenda for next spring. But maybe throughout the winter I might try my hand on it if I can get the right uh, tools. I need to get a power buffer and see if I can figure out how to do it myself. But that's only if I have the time and when I'm at home, to be honest with you, I don't really wanna spend the time polishing my truck, though I do want it to be polished. I want to be at home more than I want my truck polished. So, the truck can be polished later. The moments at home, once they're they're gone, you can't have them again. It's looking nice, looking nice. This box underneath here is nice and shiny now. That's good. It's good. Feel a lot better rolling down the road in a clean rig. I just. I'm not happy and I don't feel comfortable when the truck's not clean. I mean, I didn't go all out on the trailer since it's not mine. I just wanted it washed off because nobody ever washes our trailers. Nobody ever takes the initiative to go and wash the trailer, so. Well, I'm 
end up looking like these could be polished wheels. That'd be great, right? But then someone's got to polish them. But you know, if we pay to polish the wheels, these trailers change hands so often that uh, they would just look like this right away again. Oh, and they blew off one of my light basils here. Oh, well, I'm gonna have to go back there and ask them. Oh boy, and this is still dirty. Let's be wiped down. Okay, well, it's better than it was, but uh, I'm gonna have to go ask them where this went. Because these just come off, eh? I think I have some spares with me, but. Kind of defeats the purpose of having a nice clean rig if you're missing one of these basils. All the rings, and look at this, this still needs to be wiped down. I'm crying out loud. I can never get it all. Okay, well, I've got to walk back over there and uh, see if I can find that ring. Look at this. Oh, that's all stained on me. And this here, that's not stained on. Oh, come on, Blue Beacon. Look at this. <sighs> if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. Found it. It's a little beat up already. Need to replace them. They're not too expensive, but see this, it just hooks in there, right? Hooks in around that rubber. Sort of get in place there. Center it, and there you go. Yeah, they definitely need to be replaced already. It's not real chrome, right? Not real aluminum, it's just, it's plastic. With like a, a fake chrome layer over it. That's all it needs to be. I used to have a close, close look at all this stuff here yet, man. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna get some bull snot out right now and work on that. I can't, I can't leave it like that. I can't leave it like that. Don't worry, old blue. We'll uh, shine up your rear end there. Get, gotta have a nice looking rear end. Going down the highway. Everyone's looking at it, right? All right, we're feeling a lot better now. Let's see if we can figure out how to get out of here. I don't know about you guys, but when the truck is dirty, I just, I don't enjoy the day as much. It almost gets my anxiety up. Just having the dirt washed off makes me feel Turn so right much ahead. better. Turn left in 30 meters. I'm in a parking lot, Karen, calm down. I'm trying to follow the arrows to the exit. Those arrows point this way, those arrows point that way. I think it's this way. In 200 meters, turn left on, grab Hind Road and then turn right in 100 meters. Look at this in Kenworth here. Meters, turn left on, Commerce Park Drive and then turn right into 110 meters. Look at that. Woo! Nice. Oh, it's for sale. There's a for sale sign in the window. Should I buy it? Okay. Well, this this did not lead me down towards the exit. This is not the exit. Why are the arrows pointing me this way? All right, okay, we're gonna turn around. We had it right the first time, apparently. We can take a second look at this truck. In 100 meters, turn right on Commerce Park Drive and then turn left into 160 meters. Quiet, Karen, I'm dreaming. Interrupting my dreams. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I took a wrong turn. You told me to go that way. In nope. 200 meters, turn left on, grab Hind Road and then turn right in 100 meters. It says no truck exit here. How do we get out of here? No truck exit that way. 
Okay. I don't think I've ever been to this truck stop before, so you can tell. Turn right. I know, I know. Yes, this way, okay. For first timers, this is a very confusing truck stop. I'm just gonna let you know. Very confusing. Like they could have just made it straightforward. Like here, here's how you get in, straight shot into the parking lot. There's how you get out, straight shot out. But no, it's like weaseling in and out of here, go around here, turn left here, turn right there. If you get lost, well, good luck. Check Google Maps. I bet it's real nice inside. I just don't have time to go in there right now. I gotta get moving. This was my break for the day. I'll still have to stop for my half hour sometime. Probably have a shower then if I can find a good shower along the way. We got one in more break. Meters, turn left on Radhine Road and then take the entrance to the right in 120 meters. Okay, there's a bus going out over there. Okay, I'm gonna follow the bus. This place is huge. In 200 meters, turn left on Radhine Road and then take the entrance to the right in 120 meters. And one way you can tell the truck is from the US when you're in Canada is that they have a, a nice, clean, painted frame. Believe me, you drive in Canadian winter and Canadian weather conditions, your frame isn't going to look that good for that long. I need to redo mine. But it's like these old trucks here, everybody's got like a perfectly clean frame because they, they never leave the pavement, right? None of these trucks leave the pavement, ever. Come deliver a load up in Manitoba once. Show you some real backwoods trucking. It's hard to keep a truck looking nice. We're gonna turn left here. Uh, nobody is using their signals around here. Uh, there's two more vehicles coming from our right. All right, three more. Four more. I'm going for it. I'm going for it.
through the interchange there and parked on the shoulder of the on-ramp to our right over here, off the highway. Then I have this whole on-ramp to gain speed so that by the time I hit the highway, I'm doing as close to highway speed as possible. That's the way I do it. Anything's better just parking on the shoulder just to hang out. It's been nice cruising through here though, haven't been here in a while. We're gonna take I-84 like I said, I want to avoid the big cities as much as possible. destination but it's getting pretty late and I don't want to be left without a parking spot tonight. I might have to park on the ramp here with all these guys. Okay looks like we can park here. Good. If this is if this is gonna work, then uh, this is good. I'm getting a little nervous riding late into the night in this region because everything fills up really quickly. I I'd like to get closer tonight, but if I can find parking here, I'm just gonna stay here, do my 10 hours, and we'll be on the road tomorrow. I should still be about an hour early, so I have about an hour to play with. We have four hours of driving. If there's no big traffic jams. We're here in uh, New York State, I believe. I'm trying to see where we're at here. Nope, not quite. We're in Pennsylvania still. I think this is where I might lay down my head tonight. We'll see. We'll see. I'll take a look up ahead on my Trucker Path app, see what parking is like. I'd like to go further, but. I don't want to be left without a parking spot. I know, my GoPro doesn't have nearly as good low light capabilities, I know. My other camera does a lot better, maybe I should have grabbed that one. I'm just going to quickly walk up here to see if there's any better spots. I don't want to come all the way up here with the truck. We're not going to have any parking up here. I'll walk up here, give it a look. Sometimes there's a bunch of spots open. But once you're up here, if there's no parking up here, then you just have to keep on going. So right now, at least we have a parking spot, right? All these lights here are blue. Doesn't that mean they're defective? Pretty sure. Oh, yeah, see, you looking pretty full, pretty full, or is that an open spot right there? Oh, 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 that might be a handicap spot. Oh, there's one spot open. Okay. Well, if no one else comes in by the time I get down to my truck. Pull up here. Just gonna go make sure it's not a handicap spot. It's really humid out, really hot and humid. So I was able to roll up and park in the parking lot up here actually. So I think we'll be okay here. 
I wouldn't mind parking on the ramp on the way up there too. It's a nice big wide shoulder, guaranteed no neighbors, but you do have trucks passing you all the time. And I was just thinking like, where would I feel safest? Well, if anything happened on the highway, say someone fell asleep, lost control, or was driving drunk or whatever, veered off the highway, fell asleep, I'm right there, right up the ramp. They could slam right into the back of me and while I'm sleeping and I'm off to meet Jesus. Not ready to go there today yet, so I figure the best, safe, safest place for me would be to park up here in the parking lot if there's space. There was that one space available. Parked up here. Now I just have to worry about my neighbor dragging his trailer into me in the morning. But I think we'll be okay. Here, let me show you. I'll grab my other camera so we can see the low light a little better. All right, Sony, work your magic. Okay. See, all these lights are blue here. Crazy. Way better low light, right? Way better. So this is my neighbor right there. He needs to be able to get out this way in the morning. I think I left him plenty of space. I left my nose a little bit further back so that he can get out because the curb is right here, right? Not much space. Did the same thing so that the guy beside him could easily get out. And then if we go around to the back here, there's still plenty of space around the back for people to get by and get around me if they need to. Plenty of space. So that's that. Decision's been made, we're parking right here. So thank you for joining to hang out with me today. I really do appreciate it. If you don't mind, go down below the video, make sure you're subscribed or make sure you're still subscribed. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Tomorrow we head through New York State into Connecticut and then into Massachusetts. We're gonna get to Woburn afternoon sometime. The appointment's for 2 p.m. I'm planning to be there for 1 p.m. It's one of those places that if I'm early, it's good, it's not bad. You gotta be careful. Some places out there, you show up early, they get mad at you. Show up late, they get mad. Show up early, they get mad. Sometimes you show up on time, they get mad. They want you in that five minute window before your appointment. Five, 10 minutes before so that they can start unloading at your appointment time. So if your appointment time's at three o'clock, they want the forks under the first pallet at 3 p.m. Did I say three? Right at your appointment time. Oh well, it'll be, it'll be pretty straightforward. We'll go deliver that. It's just one skid. All the way to Massachusetts here for one skid. And then I got another four skids, I believe, that are going to Beverly. Is it four or is it? Oh no, it's that whole front piece contraption in the front of my trailer going to Beverly. That's at 8 a.m. the following morning. So I'm gonna have a little bit of time tomorrow to just uh, go find a good place to park, go have a shower, and probably work on some videos. And then after we deliver that 8 a.m., then we'll rush up to Biddeford in Maine, get that unloaded Thursday afternoon. And then we'll be empty and we'll see what life has in store for us after that. I'll have to call them to the load gods and tell them to start working. You're gonna need a load. Remember everybody, to be safe out there. Stay safe, drive safe. I'll see you tomorrow.